everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to be implementing our structural directive. We will also be introducing the notion of view container. First let's quickly recap how our directive is going to be used. So let's just show here how this would be used. We are going to pass in here the login button in its initial implementation and when we click login this is going to trigger the opening of the model. So let's have a look at it. Let's switch here to the open on click directive. What we're going to do here is we are going to inject here in the constructor two things that all structural directives need. The first one is a reference to the template itself. So as you know, this directive can really only be applied to a ng template tag. So if we inject here the template reference, we are going to have a handle to the template so that we can use it to instantiate the component that is inside it. Now we are going to inject here another thing which is called the view container. So what is the view container? The view container represents a container where one or more views can be attached. So let's have a look at what we can do with the view container. So we have here a couple of methods. We can create a component and attach it to this view container, but we can also create an embedded view. The create embedded view method takes as input parameter a template that we have here. This is the ng template onto which our structural directive was associated. So this means that we can take the template, we can create an embedded view and attach it to this element onto which this directive is being applied. So now let's go back to our application template and see how are we going to use this directive. So let's rewrite this. We are going to remove this ng template which was just to demonstrate how ng if works and we are going to simulate here the same situation as we had before. So we are going to add here a ng template. We are going to put the directive inside it and we are going to remove here this directive which gets applied here instead. So we are essentially manually desugaring the star syntax into this syntax here which makes it a little bit easier to understand what is going on in this type of directives. So the template reference that gets injected here at the level of the constructor of the directive is this ng template and the view container corresponds here to this element. We are going to be able to take this template and by calling create embedded view we are going to be able to instantiate it and display it here in line in this template at this particular location, the same location as the ng template. So now let's see how could we implement this functionality. So we have here an input property which is called AU model open on click which corresponds to the name of the directive itself. So what we're going to do here is we are going to receive the value of this property using the input decorator. With this decorator we are going to define here a TypeScript setter which has exactly the same name as the input property. So this means that we will be receiving this value here that is getting passed to the input property of the directive. So in this case this is a reference to the login button. Now because there is no directive applied here to this button element, login button will actually be a HTML reference to the login button. So it will be a reference to the DOM element. So what we are receiving here is a DOM element directly. It's an HTML base element. So we can annotate it here with this TypeScript type definition that is a global type definition that is available from the TypeScript compiler directly. So this element does not have to be an HTML button, it could be any clickable element on the page. So what we want to do is we want to take the element and we want to detect here the click DOM event and in response to a click in the element onto which the directive is applied, we are going to take the view container and just in case that something was already instantiated inside the view container, we are going to clear it and then we are simply going to take again the view container and we are going to call create embedded view and we are going to instantiate the template onto which this directive is applied. So 
At this stage, we should already have the model showing up on the screen. Let's quickly switch back to this screen. We have refreshed here the application and now if we click here on the login button, we can see that the model is being displayed as expected. Now let's notice one thing here in the implementation of this directive, we are adding event listeners but we are not removing them. Now because the whole element will be removed from the page, in principle this would not cause a problem, but it's always a good idea not to rely on implicit removal of any listeners that we add. Later in this course we are going to refactor this in order to remove these listeners manually. But right now let's concentrate on the main functionality of what we are implementing, which is the open and close modal functionality. So let's see how we are going to implement that. We are going to add here the possibility of opening the model on the sign up button as well. So right now we are only passing in here a button. Let's see how could we improve this implementation to receive multiple buttons. So the idea here is instead of receiving only one element, we would instead be receiving here several elements. Now what we're going to do here is we are going to create here a elements property which will be an array of HTML based elements. The way that we are going to use this property is that we are going to apply for each to all these elements. So we are going to do elements dot for each and for each element we are going to apply the same logic that we had here. So I'm going to take this logic and I'm going to use it here inside this inline function we are going to call element dot add event listener and we are going to apply the same logic here now here we want to support the case where only one element is passed on and not necessarily an array so let's quickly test here for the presence of the length property so if there's a length property then we can be sure that this is an array so we can assign it directly Otherwise, we need to create an array ourselves, so we are going to create here an empty array and to this empty array we are going to add here a single element, so it will be an array with only one element, which is the input that we have passed on to this property. So now if we hit Ctrl S, this should already be working. Let's test it out. If we click login, the model is showing up which means that the initial implementation of our structural directive is already in place and working as expected. Now, if we go back here to the component and instead of passing only the direct reference to the login button, if we instead pass a reference to an array with only one element, let's see if this is still working. So it's still working as expected, but now let's also pass in here a reference to the sign up button. So a second element in this array is the sign up button. Let's see how this works. So if we now hit sign up, the model is still opening. At this point, we would like to pass in a parameter to the model that would control which tab gets displayed when the model is shown on the screen. And we're going to do that in an upcoming lesson. But right now, did you notice something? How would we implement the functionality for closing the model? Because the directive that controls if the model is displayed does not have information about if there was a click outside the model. That information is available at the level of the model component, which is completely separate from the open and close directive. So let's see how can we make the two directives communicate with each other in a transparent way. This is Kemi Write Up. In the next lesson.